I thought, I thought I'd do another quick look at the uh, design of the clamp. I did reduce the diameter to, to 215.5 um, and then I reprinted the, the um, uh, clamp again but because the internal diameter of the print wasn't quite 15.5 it was still a bit too small so that clip didn't work. What I thought I'd do is just um, I'm going to reprint it again having uh, adjusted the compensation a bit but also I thought I'd come back into the design and just um, adjust it very slightly as well let's see when I did this before I didn't show you the pan tool here which means that you can move the model across the screen like this um, obviously the spin tool you can turn it round so that you can see it in diff different angles by dragging the um, trackpad or dragging the mouse I expect the single finger on the trackpad what I thought I'd do is just adjust the model very slightly. What I wanted to do was to um, create a chamfer across the um, across the front of the clip part so that it's sort of like as a kind of a wedge shape here. And I was thinking about how to do it, and I was wondering if it would be just okay to choose the um, edge here and then um, use the uh, chamfer. If you, when you've got the pull tool open, you, so I've chosen the edge and it's highlighted and I've got the pull tool there. If you go down into the bottom um, left hand corner you can see various options. Normally when you select it on an edge the pull tool will come up and it will be a, uh, a fillet. But you can also put a chamfer. So if I just choose chamfer before I start, um, let's see if I can just, no it's not going to do it. You can see that there's an area brush is coming up here to say it failed to create chamfer. So I thought it might just have a go at the chamfer, but that hasn't worked. So what we can do instead is to make a sketch on this uh, plane. So we just um, choose the uh, select and select this plane, and then go into the sketch. Select that plane, and then go into the sketch tool, which is again up here in the middle. Choose the sketch tool, and then um, do a plan view again to get it sort of upright. What I thought I'd do is, uh, if I can't do a charm for what I thought I'd do is just make a line. So I'm just going to take a line from the one of the points here. Because I want it to be symmetrical on the other side as well, there's actually a function where you can actually mirror the... Um, uh, so what I'm going to do is just make a line here, just a normal line, in this, along the centre line of the object. Then just exit out of that. Then you can actually select it and right click it and then you can say set as mirror line. So if you then create something on the left side it will also appear on the right side as well mirrored on this line. So if I create a charm for here or create a, a sloping line here it will then appear on the right side as well and it will be symmetrical. That's actually quite good for creating many different shapes and so on. That's another useful tool from um, Design Spark Mechanical. I'm just going to go and put the line here. So wherever it is that I choose for the beginning of this line will also go on the other side as well. And you can see it's generating the... What I thought I'd do is to leave... Um, in order to leave three... as it will be stronger. I think I'll create a cut here um, leaving three three millimeters at the bottom for strength, and you can see it's done likewise at the top. What we'll need to do, I normally do it a little bit longer than the the required uh, length, just to make sure that we don't miss any bits when we actually go to cut it. Uh, so I'm just going to do that. So and now I'll just create this line here. What you can then do is to deactivate the the mirror tool as we no longer or the, the line. That, uh, so we first of all, what I normally do is to just where it says set as mirror line on the right click, I just take that tick out. So now it's no longer a mirror line. And then you can use the uh, trim away to actually um, delete the line itself as well. Um, possibly delete this line here and this one. Sometimes it doesn't work. 
and it may mean that you can't delete it at all so you won't worry about that um, and what, I mean, and what I might do have to do is create a shape here a filled in shape or no, I won't select it so I think what I'll have to do is to create a, a closed sort of shape here like a, a surface so I'm just going to come into here no, this is the end of the line I'm just going to come across here to the other line millimeters hopefully we see uh, back out into the yeah, I don't know how nice it has it has created the shape here uh, or well, the surface here now so what we need to do is just um, just going to press the control button and select that and then also well, just exit out of that tool and I'll go to the pull tool and I'll select that surface and then I'm going to select this one as well this wedge here Oops. This wedge here and this wedge here. And then if I go down to the in order to make sure that it actually does work and does what we want, I'm just gonna go back into the little options uh, pane and in the bottom left and choose cut and then I'm going to go and choose spin, spin it round so we can see the effect of cutting through there. And then the pull tool again, just gonna make sure that cut's highlighted and then just pull that th right through and it didn't work unless these, oh no it did work, that's alright so now basically we've created a, 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 a chamfer here um, that's um, going to help make those bit more clamping on the end of that um, uh, that flange there and because normally what happens is that the two tips of the of the piece come together um, what I will do is put an inset for that so I can show you that and um, I'll go and save that now save as, I'm just going to save it as a version and then I'm going to say 15 mil with chamfer Save. Sometimes you can make a charm for by selecting lines, and sometimes you can't. So you have to sort of like cr then create a kind of a plane on the line of where you want the or per perpendicular to the line where you want the charm to be, and then you just draw the sketch on, making sure that um, you've made a whole shape. Otherwise, it doesn't work. Um, because you can't choose a, a you know a round, it won't it won't work on a round um, item. So it needs to be flat, and then you make it slightly larger than you need to do. Close it off both ends, and then you can slice it back through the shape, and then produce your chamfer. So that should now work better for clamping those two um, sides together. And I wanted to um, just do that so that we've got our fifth in the for the for the um, clamping part for the actual hole we've got our 15.5 millimeters and for these two I've just created this chamfer here which should make it easier to um, clamp it together because we've got more more to clamp um, and it should void, uh, avoid the problem of these two tips meeting before it's properly clamped here so that should help that to be a bit more uh, effective for clamping purposes the only other thing to be borne in mind is that since we thinned that out a bit our flange here might be quite thin now so what I might do is to actually go in there and select that surface at the end and then bring it, pull it out again another millimetre because it was two millimetres to start with and I've made it a bit thinner so I'm just going to pull that out and, and give that one millimetre of extra thickness that will that'll give that this, make this um, uh, uh, recess only two millimeters now so I think that's um, that's acceptable so I'm going to save that again make sure I've saved the changes to it and now I'm going to just export it again as an STL and we'll come back and um, print it out uh, let's see. save as and then you want to choose STL uh, that's another thing to be born in mind just check 
you always want to make sure that there's one entry here um, when you go to save it. What you can do is you can uh, hide, you can show and hide these as well. If you show and hide them, you can, if you've got a, an item that you've made of multiple parts, if you go and show and hide here, you can basically save it out as one of the parts without having to um, do anything else. So that's a good thing to bear in mind if you're producing something with multiple uh, parts and you want to send them to the printer on their own, which would usually be the way to do it. So I'm just going to save this, um, uh, save as, save as, and an STL file. That way we can put it in the printer and print it. So I want to um, re I want to um, redo, retry the print again um, with the 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 ten millimeter support idea and also the um, a, a, a t tiny adjustment to increase the um, size of the uh, in the X and Y so that we can increase the size of this um, hole again because it was although it was I believe it was only uh, three or four tenths of a millimeter out I, it would still be useful to have that three or four tenths so I'm going to just um, adjust the compensation to get this uh, to be around about 15.5 um, this uh, hole. Anyway I've, I've um, saved that out now and I'll come back to you again when we're uh, in the uh, Incura and we're going to be slicing it and see what it looks like in Cura. Now here we are, here it is and um, just, um, you can see the new chamfer that's been created um, I need to put the um, scaling in three or four tenths of a millimetre that it was inaccurate by 2.66% so I'm going to say 2.67 I suppose it should be so we're going to change the um, and select the item with a left click and then choose the scale and in the I'm going to choose I'm going to take the uniform scaling out and I'm going to it said 2.66 or 2.67 so I'm going to say um, in the X 102.67 and in the in the in the Y we're going to say 102.67 let's see there we just got that in there now so it mostly increased the um, uh, increased it in X and Y by 2.67% um, so I'm just going to to lift it off the bed as well we want to take out the drop model down box and we want to lift the Z by 10 millimeters I've done that, that should um, lift the model off the bed by 10 millimeters and then we can create support material to actually support that um, Support materials already created there, I'm touching the build plate. I'm also going to just go to support flow as well. We can find support flow. That's another thing with Cure, if there's a setting that you can't find, you can go up into the uh, search and search it. Just going to do support flow. Because we could, should really plan to make our support flow 80%, which just basically reduces the amount of um, yeah, flow is 100% support flow. That's, we're going to change that to 80%. It just makes the support material easier to break away from the model. So I'm just going to make sure that changes. Okay, and then I'm just going to go to support Z distance as well. That's the that's the distance between the supports and the um, first layer of a print. So I'm just going to go into support Z distance. It's already set at 0.2 because the layer height is 0.2, and I usually say that 
this isn't an automatic setting so you have to make sure when you use Cura that if you do use support material you always go and check support Z distance it might be a good idea to just have this on your um, menu to open automatically so it really should be the same as the layer height it's been a couple of days since I um, actually uh, did the initial redesign of this um, clamp for the purposes of adding the extra uh, taper rather than the chamfer which should be a taper I believe is the correct is the correct term for it anyway I added the slight taper there to to actually improve the clamping ability of the clip it's not completely right but it's it's much better than it was and um, I think I could fine tune it even more but um, I, I was using an example in the CAD software and also in the slicing software so in the CAD software I was looking at Design Spark Mechanical of course and in the in the um, terms of the printer I'm look, now looking at sort of combining the designing aspect and also the um, print quality aspect now I'm trying to refine the print quality for the um, Easy 3D K9 3D printer and um, looking at the model and you can see that um, it's on a platform of support material. I discovered after quite a lot of testing and um, that if you if you want to get a, a dimensionally accurate print for any reason, if you want something like we've done to match a certain dimension, this is particularly the dimension I'm looking at, the size of the um, head of the um, bolt recess and other things in the dimensionality the the um, symmetric symmetrical nature of the print you really need to put it on a little platform of support material I've used 10 millimeters but it's possible we might try and get away with five millimeters but otherwise even when the bed is properly leveled I tend to get a kind of quite strong elephant's foot effect whereby the say the bottom quarter or the bottom um, say third of the print is quite badly distorted it tends to have a quite strong elephant's foot which you can't get rid of with um, um, a deburring tool it's a bit stronger than that and um, and it kind of has a concavity in it as well which is possibly uh, part of the, the elephant's foot effect whereas the, the con there will be a concavity between the top and the bottom um, though I've tried I can't really quite explain this however if you put it on a 10 millimeter uh, block of support material this these effects go and you'll now get a straight up and down side and you'll get dimensional accuracy uh, and you'll also get a symmetrical print as well instead of the first sort of third of the print being compacted down you'll get a symmetrical print as well so I, I would recommend that if you are after a, a dimensionally accurate print on the uh, K9 you go for um, a little platform after all we, we have a hundred we have um, hundred millimeters to play with and we're just losing um, 10 millimeters which is 10 percent of our build volume so in a way it's not a great um, thing to lose and also the amount of um, the material used isn't great you know a huge proportion of the overall um, it uh, and it also doesn't add much to the print time nor to the energy consumption either because it's a very efficient printer to dealing with energy it doesn't use any bed heating etc so all in all it, it does um, it, it does make sense to do it obviously as a slight condition to this you have to say that I have changed the the bed material of the printer to the Ender 3 bed and how it would work on the um, normal uh, K9 bed so anyway to get on to this I've made a few changes to try to optimize the print and this is on the back of quite a lot of experimentation I haven't gone through everything I've done because um, I, what I would rather do is to offer you a solution in, in what works rather than take you through all the of the times that I wasn't able to provide the solution. The whole idea of my videos is to help kind of reduce the learning curve that you experience otherwise and sometimes learning curves can be a bit painful. 
so this is these are the things that I've gone through um, the first thing is Z seam alignment as you can see the Z seam has shown us the white areas here I just look for Z seam I hasten to add that this is all experimental what I'm doing here I've chosen to show you this one whereas I haven't shown you the hundred other ones I've done because of the because I think this might be a significant um, improvement so walls um, Z seam alignment I'm looking at shortest here before we were doing sharpest corner I chose random but again I didn't think that was uh, it didn't improve anything uh, for the quality of the print so when I went for shortest the Z seam went inside it went inside the edge of this um, recess here and there's one a couple of places where it's now on the outside here at the top of the um, clamp here and uh, on this little uh, bit here but for the most part it's gone inside or there's a little bit on the edge here of this uh, the front part of the clamp and then a little bit down at the bottom here in the corner there I'm just going to see how that affects print quality it may be the odd scattered bit I think that's a bit of dirt on the screen actually no it's not so yeah and there's a little bit on the edge of the hole here so that's one thing that's just a thing for the surface of the print now I've gone to, down to looking at walls um, with the print um, there's the walls in the infill which you can see um, here um, let's just zoom into that again there's the red part which is the shell on the outside of the print and then there's walls on the infill which is shown in yellow the shell is shown in red and the infill is shown in yellow if we so yeah so I'll just go to that actually so that's going to be walls just to save actually it is here but that's just that particular aspect of it so if we just do a search for walls yes I've actually changed wall wall line count to one so normally we'd get a green line in the inner which would be the inner wall but I've taken that away by making the wall line count one but before you go thinking now my print's not going to be very strong we'll just go down inside the print and you can see what's inside it you can see here that there's two walls on the infill although they don't come right to the surface you can see that they're there so it won't be weak one thing that's great about Cura when you're going through all the settings when you hover over each of the little settings you get up a nice little box which tells you all about it which is really useful so that the idea is to reduce the number of walls now the inner wall is completely missing um, but it is there we've seen underneath the surface there are more walls underneath the surface so that should maintain the strength of the item okay, so that's wall line count one I'm just going to go on to the next thing um, now to get the number of um, walls up again to um, the strong level we'll just go to infill infill pattern here we are yes now I wanted to increase the um, uh, number of walls in the infill so I increased extra infill wall count to two that's where we get our two extra lines from of the in of of a wall on the infill and also I increased infill overlap percentage to 50 percent that's to get a, a better interface between the uh, walls and the infill um, because I believe it defaults to five percent so I increased it to 50 percent that was after having watched a video um, which I'll link in the description it was uh, quite a number of years ago now but um, it's still relevant um, today Look when looking at um, things to do with um, print quality and so on 
so there's various things there um, there's not a great deal of changes apart from the ones I've illustrated to the default profile but um, I'm just experimenting with these different features in order to get the best kind of result and it's not to say because we're using this uh, kind of a uh, profile for the uh, K9 it can't also be used on N the Ender 3 on any any 3D printer of course it could benefit from these settings obviously we've changed the model from sitting on the bed to sitting on a kind of raft of um, support material to eliminate a kind of elephant's foot which I was seeing and it does eliminate it and it produces a very nice um, symmetrical print which is much nicer than it would be if it was on the bed entirely and we've also sought to um, improve the quality of the surface both on the top and on the sides I believe that the um, Z seam was actually introducing quite a few um, unevennesses on the surface so this is my final option to uh, put it um, to the shortest um, position to improve that so you can see that I've still got the scaling so this is the scaling on the X and Y because we established that um, uh, the dimensional accuracy wasn't perfect this, this is because of the nature of the flexibility of the um, top works of the printer we have to add a little bit of compensation in and this produces a dimensionally accurate print in the X and Y I haven't put any compensation in the Z because I believe that the uh, raising it off the bed has actually corrected the Z I'm just going to save this out and then we'll come back to it after we've made the print Right, um, I just wanted to look at cleaning the nozzle um, on the K9 and this same procedure would apply to any 3D printer. If you're going to level the bed of any 3D printer it's really very important to make sure the nozzle is clean first. So I'm just going to do this with the uh, K9. Just um, With the K9 I'm going to set it on to feed to heat the nozzle up and then we'll extrude a little filament and as it's cooling down we'll just clean the end of the nozzle you can do this in various ways of course you could use a cloth um, to do it or you could use a glove and what I normally do is to use a glove a leather gardening glove and uh, it will protect your fingers from the uh, heat of the nozzle so you can see it's now beginning to extrude and now I will then turn it on to um, the middle position and that will then cool it down again and then what we can do is simply um, keep um, brushing over the nozzle until it's um, it's clean what I normally do is do that until the, the, the filament begins to cool and uh, nothing more comes out of it anymore and as I say this um, technique is applicable to all 3D printers and really it should be done before you even attempt to level the bed because you can't level the bed unless the nozzle is cleaned first. It's quite difficult to um, estimate, of course, when the the uh, filament is done, but I would give it a little time, maybe a minute or so, until the temperature comes down to a point at which the filament can no longer come out. I think we can call that done now. What you can do is just quickly confirm it's done by um, having a brief look at the nozzle from the end, and you should see a clean ring of metal at the end of the nozzle which will show that it's um, completely clean and then we'll go on to level the bed as I've described with the K9 printer particularly um, it needs to be done in a slightly different way because of the fact that the upper works of the printer are quite flexible which means that the paper isn't pinched in the normal way it would be where the upper works of the printer are rigid so I'll just go on to level the bed um, I'm going to just check 
the last time I used it, it was okay. And um, but I think it's necessary with this printer to um, check probably every time you do a print just to confirm, if nothing else. You certainly don't want to do a print and then discover that you, by not leveling the bed, you um, wasted the print. So that's now at position one. I think that's fine. I'm going to move it to position two. There's a little tiny amount of grab on it, which is probably what we're looking for, not too much. I'll just go and check that it's consistent. I would say, I would say that's probably a bit too loose, actually. I'm probably going to go back to position one and just verify that again. I would say position one is right. I'm just going to open it again. I'm going to turn it anti-clockwise until there's a slight grab. Slight grab, it's a slight grab. Now I'm going to go to position two. So once again to reiterate, I'm saying that you turn the adjustment knob clockwise to lower the print bed and then until the point where the, the paper isn't at all grabbed by the nozzle and then turn it back, or turn it anti-clockwise again to raise the bed until there is a, just a slight grab on the printer paper and I think that would be the uh, most optimal position for the uh, print head to be with this printer. I'm going on to measure position two and then there's no grab at all with that one so I'm just because that's already turned clockwise I'm just going to turn it anti-clockwise until I feel a grab There's, there's no grab at all there, so I'm just going to turn it back anti-clockwise again. Well, I feel it grab a little bit. So nothing. There's a slight grab. Just turn it clockwise again. Just to confirm. No grab. Anti clockwise again. Now there's a slight grab, and I'm content that both of them will be the same now. Both position one and position two. So now, when to start the printer, you just. Um, lift the nozzle. What I would do is to say press, hold and release then it gets you the right time to lift the nozzle so press, hold and release press, hold and release otherwise I think it's you find it hard to tell exactly how long you have to hold it and sometimes if you press it for too short a time it will do something other than you intended to do so I think that's good. Now we can actually start the print off and as before, I'm going to watch it print the first few layers. So all we need to do is to um, just all the the files already loaded up. So all we need to do is just press the button quickly, and then um, it will start. You need to make sure that the print head is off the bed when you do that, because you don't want the nozzle to heat up against the bed, because it it may damage the surface. We're just starting off the print now, and obviously I will come back to you when it's um, finished. Now we're looking at the 
finished print. Um, this is the yellow filament, which is the brand new filament. Or at least it's brand new out of its container, out of its bag. I only opened it yesterday, so it's completely brand new. And you can see here that the dimensional accuracy has gone a bit. It's gone down to about 15.2. Um, or 15.1. I think 0.2 is a bit um, uh, generous. It's probably about 15.1 or maybe 15.2 and it should be 15.5 so it's about three tenths out of where it should be and um, I, I, what I was doing was with these series of prints I was simply trying to improve the um, quality of the extrusion and uh, the uniformity of it and also the top surface of the print I wasn't worried too much about the dimensional accuracy and we have managed to improve things you can see um, you can see the quality of the print and the extrusion is pretty much uniform although the um, there is still some waviness in the verticals but I imagine it's because of the flexibility of the upper works of the printer that you're not going to get total uniformity um, but it is much better than it was and I have to say that this is mostly down to the, the dry filament because I believe that the terrible print quality I had with the black filament was because it was very damp the green filament the black filament had been in the shed and it was damp in the shed and the green filament had been in the house for six months and it was damp, it's sort of damp in the house. So um, that I think the, the fact that the extrusion is more uniform is due to the fact that it's dry filament. So I would urge you, um, if you do decide to get one of these printers, that you only use dry filament with it and try and keep your filament dry as best you can. And information about keeping filament dry can be found online. Most 3D printing YouTubers have got something about drying filament. I might do something about that myself actually as well. It's a, sim a fairly simple thing and, and the, the technology doesn't cost a lot. You can get it for very little money. And I'll just show you the top. The top is now no gaps at all um, and it's really fantastic. The top is brilliant. It's much better than many of my 3D prints because I don't normally bother about things like um, uh, that kind of thing. I don't normally worry about the appearance of things too much. But you can see that the top of the print is very good now. Um, so that's that's an excellent result. Um, you can see on both sides where the holes are. There's a kind of um, an extra little piece um, which is missing after the hole. And I'm not quite sure why that is. Um, it's kind of um, like a it's almost a shift in the in the y because this is the this is the y axis really it's a kind of a thinning for some reason that's been on all of the prints there's been some kind of artifact after the holes on all of the prints well you haven't been able to quite eliminate it but if you look on the other side um it's quite a lot better it's definitely got better and i i honestly don't know exactly why that is it could be due to the fil the, the dry filament but um, it's very it's very hard to say. But um, certainly, by using dry filament, you're going to be giving yourself the best chance of achieving good results. Sim for symmetry and for straight up and down sides, you really need to use the uh, ten millimeter um, standoff by using um, the support material. I am considering how we can adjust the bed. Po possibly to take away that 10 millimeter so it can raise the bed by 10 millimeters but I have to I haven't yet um, worked it all out so I'm going to be thinking about that so I mean I'm still going to be looking at the printer you know on an ongoing basis so this isn't the end of things by any means but I think I might I might have reached the end of um, trying to optimize the print for from the the, the slicer uh, point of view but um, don't quote me on that because I you know I'm, I'm a great one for continuing to improve things if I can. So uh, anyway, um, that's the result after the recent bank of tests and I think if you use the settings which I um, used in Cura for um, the top of the print um, it will give you, it will yield um, some better results. I don't think there's too much to be done with um, regard to speed and retraction and that kind of thing because when I did try changing the speed, reducing the speed and changing the retraction it didn't make any difference to the quality of the print at all. 
So uh, I don't think that's I think that's a blind alley. So you would probably wouldn't wouldn't gain anything by experimenting with those things. OK, thanks for watching and see you in my next um, video, which I'm going to be looking at the clip and how I can actually um, use that design to create another design which will help um, hold the spool in place. So instead of having cable ties to hold it, I will be creating a kind of um, a, a flange to go over the um, rod, which will be an adjustable flange using the clip as the base and then adding a circular part to it. And so we'll have some fun designing that. So I hope you'll join me for that video. And I'll see you again soon. And thanks for watching. Bye.